So we are still examining consensus with weaker failure detectors than P. So for example, an eventually perfect failure detector. And if you remember what's an eventually perfect failure detector, it is inaccurate and eventually it becomes accurate. So let us discuss limits on the tolerance of an eventually accurate failure detector. So the following result holds. An eventually perfect failure detector cannot solve consensus with resilience T equal or greater than half of the number of processes. So we are now giving bounds on the number of processes that can fail. Remember, in the fail-stop model with a perfect failure detector, we could tolerate up to n minus 1 process failure. What we are saying, T can only be a minority of processes. We don't know. But at least it cannot be half or more than, than the number of processes in the system. And we are going to prove this by using the what is called the partitioning argument. Let us look to this. This is an interesting proof. So we assume that such an algorithm A exists, that there is an algorithm that can solve consensus with an eventually perfect failure detector with resilience greater or equal half of the nodes in the system. But we come to what we call a contradiction is just a sign of contradiction. Therefore, we can conclude. So this was our assumption that the algorithm exists. Then we conclude that there is no such an algorithm that can exist. So it is not the case. It is not the case that there is an algorithm A exists. Hmm? So that is what is called proof by contradiction. And we do this just with a special case where we assume it is possible to solve the problem in the special case where we have 10 processes and five of them might fail. And diamond P initially can behave in any arbitrary way. So diamond B initially is not accurate, basically. So here is a possible execution. If we have such an algorithm and we have 10 processes, we divide them into five green processes. These are the ones here. And five blue processes. You don't see the blue yet, but this sign means that these processes, the other five, the blue ones have crashed. Initially, they have crashed, okay? And the green processes are correct, and the blue pr processes crashed, and the detector behaves perfectly. We assume that. And after some time t, or after some execution, at time t, the green processes agree in a consensus of the value zero. This is our assumption. Half can make a consensus regardless of the behavior of the failure detector. So we assume that, and this is a correct execution. So the detector is not inaccurate here. So let us take the other five processes. These are now our blue processes. They are half of the processes in the system. So they can tolerate failure of half. So we assume now that the blue processes are correct and the green processes have crashed and the failure detector behaves perfectly. And at some time, T1, they decided on the value 1. So that is fine. So these are correct behavior. So these two executions are correct executions. There is nothing wrong with them. Now, 
Let's just move one step further. If you remember the green execution. So we can have an execution, we call it E1, where we have the green processes are running and agreeing on a value zero. But the failure detector of the green processes suspects that the blue processes have failed. So this execution E1 is exactly with respect to each green process behaves like the correct execution that we mentioned for the green process. And now look to execution E2 where the failure detectors of the blue processes suspect all the green processes. So again, this execution here, here, this one, until this point, of course, is viewed exactly by each blue process exactly the same as the correct execution where the green processes were, were actually crashed. So now that is fine, we have these two executions and these two executions are legal execution, they are correct executions. We cannot see any difference between these and the one that are really correct because of the suspicions of the failure detectors. Now let us put these two executions together. So this execution E3, the execution E3 is an execution that combines E1 and E2. But the view of each green process is the same as in E1. It's failure detectors until this point works inaccurately, so the green processes will decide on the value zero, exactly like, like execution E1. And the view of the blue processes in this execution looks exactly like their view in execution E2. So in this case, processes, the blue processes, will decide on the value one, the blue value. After that, the failure detector works fine. But we get an execution where now we have decided on green values by the green processes and blue value, which is one by the blue processes. So they decide different values. So we get a contradiction. They decide different values, so we get a contradiction. Therefore, this algorithm does not exist. Algorithms can tolerate half or more of the processes in the case of an eventually perfect failure detector. So again, this proof technique is called partitioning argument. And of course, we cannot talk about time because time does not exist in an asynchronous system. But we reason here about prefixes of execution, traces that only contain events of the green ones, and then we have traces that contain only events of E2, and then we have traces that combines events in E1 and E2, and they keep the order locally between events in E1 and locally between events in E2, but they are combined together, they are mingled together. But as you can see, the view of each process is the same as before, and they should get the same decision. And the decision will be the green ones will decide zero, and the blue ones will decide one.